Welcome to this video, where we will discuss the concept and implementation of a PID controller for your quadcopter. With normal human reaction times, it is not possible to keep a quadcopter stable in the air. In this video, you will learn how to use a fast control loop to stabilize the quadcopter while also taking into account the commands that you give it with the radio transmitter. The PID loop will control the rotation rate of the quadcopter hence the name rate controller. To stabilize your quadcopter, you need to use a very fast automated control loop that sends new commands to each of the four motors multiple times per second. The control system that you will use for your quadcopter will be a 250 Hz system. This means that every four milliseconds, all four motors will receive new commands. These commands are generated depending on the commands you give yourself through the radio transmitter. In the previous video, you saw how to convert the receiver commands to a desired rotation rate in degrees per second. Now we need to make a conversion from the desired rotation rate to a motor input command for all four motors. This can be done with the help of a closed control loop. The closed control loop that you will use for the roll, pitch and yaw rotation rates is displayed on the screen. You use the gyroscope sensor to measure the actual rotation rate of the quadcopter and compare it to the desired rotation rate which you have sent from the radio transmitter. The error between both is transformed by the controller to a motor power command that is sent to each of the four motors. The resulting change in motor power changes the rotation rate of the quadcopter to a value that should be closer to the desired rotation rate than before. The actual rotation rate is measured once again and the process restarts. Now the big question is how the controller transforms the error between the desired and measured rotation to the motor input. Now suppose that the controller just consists of the difference between the desired and the measured rotation rate multiplied with a constant p. Remember that the desired rotation rate changes between plus and minus 75 degrees per second and the motor input commands between 1000 and 2000 microseconds. You can simplify this equation by introducing the error variable. Import as well the iteration number k, which is increased by 1 when you start a new iteration. This results in a very simple equation where the constant p gives a relation between the error and the motor input. Now let's suppose that you give the command to go from a rotation rate of 0 to 30 degrees per second after one second. How will the quadcopter respond in the case of a p controller? Well, the higher you choose the value for p to be, the faster the actual rotation rate approaches the desired rotation rate and the smaller the setting time, which is a good thing. However, a larger P will also give a larger overshoot. Moreover, whatever the value of P, there will also be a steady state error. This means that the actual rotation rate never reaches the desired rotation rate. We can solve this issue by adding an integral term. This term will sum up the past errors, hence eliminating the steady state error. The addition of the integral term can be implemented in the control equation by integrating the error over time. Since each iteration lasts 4 milliseconds, the integral goes from 0 seconds to k multiplied by 4 seconds. You multiply the integral once again with a constant i. The integral can be discretized by taking the average of the previous and the current error multiplying it by the length of one iteration and adding this to all past errors. Compared with the P-controller, the PI-controller will eliminate the steady state error, meaning that over time, the actual rotation rate will be equal to the desired rotation rate. Because the system still has a large overshoot and a long settling time, we will add a third and final part, the derivative term. Since a derivative along a function predicts its future value, this term will help to reduce overshoot and hence the settling time. Let's take the derivative of the error and multiply it with the constant d. A derivative can be discretized as well by subtracting the error in the current iteration with the error of the previous iteration 
and dividing the results by the duration of one iteration. Compared with a PI controller, a PID controller will have a smaller overshoot and settling time. The full discretized equation for the PID controller is given here. To be able to put this equation in Arduino, you will use two new variables in which the previous error and the previous I term are stored. Finally, you see that the input for the role equation consists of three variables and three constants, namely the P, I and D constants. Now, how will this work in the code for your flight controller? First, your microcontroller will receive the four commands from the radio transmitter sticks. This will be transformed to the desired rotation rates and the throttle input. Now calculate the error between the desired rotation rates and the actual rotation rates that were measured by the gyroscope. These errors are subsequently used in the equations that form your PID controller. In this step, you should not forget to store the errors for calculation in the next iteration. Now that you have the motor inputs for the roll, pitch and yaw rotation rates and throttle, you will use the four equations that described the quadcopter dynamics and that we derived in a previous video. These will give you the input commands for all four motors. Because you will use a 250 Hz control loop, you will need to wait until 4 milliseconds have passed to start the next iteration. In the next iteration, you will first measure the roll, pitch and yaw rotation rates with the gyroscope. Now the cycle repeats itself and you continue with the same calculations used during the previous iteration. The final remaining question is a choice of the P, I and D constants. These constants need to be chosen in such a way that their combination stabilizes the flight of your quadcopter. The following values on screen are a good compromise between agility and stability for the motor, ESC, propeller and battery combinations of your quadcopter. Notice that the values for the roll and pitch rates are equal. This is evident since the quadcopter is almost symmetrical in both directions. Finding these optimal values is not easy. There exist some basic methods to obtain them through calculations but in the end, you will always have to test and retest to find the values that work for your quadcopter. Usually, the trial and error method is done by first choosing and testing a p-value, then a value for i, and finally also a value for d. The values can be chosen with the following guidelines. First, choose a p-value that is a good balance between a too low and too high responsivity. Then choose an I value that stops unwanted drifting but does not impact the responsivity. Finally, use the D value to reduce the oscillations caused by the P value. Now you are finally ready to program the full flight controller in Arduino and test your quadcopter. In the next video, we will explore the full code. Do not worry, the code of the full flight controller only has 150 lines and the majority of these lines are a copy-paste of the code you already saw in the subprojects explained in previous videos. See you next time!